Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at um, a, chord, a particular chord shape uh, that will sort of give you the option to play any major or minor chord um, all the way through all of them. Um, so it's a bunch of different chords and it really only takes one shape and then a variation on that shape for the minor chord. Um, so we can start to think about this chord by thinking about this G chord. Open, open, two, three. You're probably familiar with that chord. If not, there's a lesson on MandoLessons.com that explains the first basic chord. So you get this G chord and you move it across to C. Now, that's only a two finger chord, um, and what we're going to be aiming for is well, it's actually a three finger chord, but it, it covers all the strings. That way you can move it. It's kind of a, the mandolin equivalent of a guitar bar chord. Um, what we're going to do, let's move up to the second fret now. So actually what we should do, start with these two on that G chord. Move it up two frets. So now you're on the fourth and fifth frets. So we've gone from G. Now we're at fourth and fifth. Now, on its own, it's not a very exciting, well, it is a particularly exciting chord, but it's probably not what we're going for. Um, so what we have to do is, like we moved up these two, we also need to move up the bottom two strings, the open strings. So we go from open, one, two. And now what you're doing is you're, I use one, one finger, um, my pointer finger, and I kind of aim for the middle two, we've got four strings here, one, two, three, four, and we're aiming for strings two and three. So the, the lower G string, right there, and the upper D string, right there. So we're kind of aiming right in between, because if we try to aim for all of them, we may not get them all. Um, and it sort of takes a little bit of moving your finger around to get exactly the right shape to get a nice clean sound. <laughs> that's sort of what you're aiming for. And if you aim for the middle two, the that G and the top D, then it may mute the lower, the higher G string, the first G string, and the lower D string. Uh, but um, it'll still create a clean sound. And so what we're trying with these two frets, we've kind of gone open, one, two, just like we moved the G up to, so we're set, we have an A chord up here, G, G sharp, A, and we've gone G, G sharp, A. So now, we can't play these frets and have these frets, so we got to move our fingers. Now here's where people do it differently. We're going to use our pointer finger for the second fret on both those sets of strings. Now some people use their middle and ring, ring fingers for the 4th and 5th frets. And some people use their ring and pinky. So whichever way you do it, it's totally fine. They each have their, um, their advantages and disadvantages. For example, with the, if you use your pointer, your middle and ring finger, you have your pinky to grab these upper notes, but if you have your ring and pinky, you've got your middle finger for that seventh. We'll get to that later. Or So, uh, use either or both, um, whatever's comfortable for you. Um, as you do it more, you'll sort of fall into a pattern. So, there we have it. We have a nice A bar chord. And now this chord, you can slide around anywhere you like. So you can play Just keep going and going and going until you run out of frets. Um, so this gives you the option to play pretty much any chord. Um, you have an A, you have an A flat, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, 
F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A, A. Um, now some of these chords, you don't really want to have to be up here to play a G chord. Um, so there's another option. Staying on this chord for a second, um, the way that I sort of keep in mind what chord I'm playing is the lowest string right there. That is the note, that note in this shape will give you the chord. So that's an A down there. G, G sharp, A. So that's an A chord. B flat, B flat major, B, B major, C major, etc. Um, it's good to sort of learn the n names of the notes on every fret. It's good practice. Um, but you can also just know them by the what fret you're starting on. Um, whatever works for you. So, like we go from G over to C, kind of move across the strings, we're going to be taking that up two frets to A, and then across. So making that into a full chord, and now we're leaving out the E string on this second chord we're moving to. A major, all four strings, and then across, take your middle and ring, or ring and pinky if you're that direction, and move it across the strings, and then you've got a D chord, D major, uh, and we know that because if we're going G, to C, G sharp, C sharp, A, D. And in this chord, we can't use the low string, because that's still an A, but we're now playing a D chord. A, D major chord. So we use the top string. So that's a D right there. E flat, E, etc. And now you can move this chord anywhere you like. So, we've got this change, and again, on that D chord, you, want, you don't want to hit that E string, because it'll sound out of tune. So now if you want to play a G chord, you don't have to be way up here. You can find, well, where's a G? There's a G with that second shape. And you can just move across the strings. Now, using that in terms of songs, you uh, start to run into some patterns. So if we're in the key of A, our one chord is right there. And then our four chord, A, B, C, D, is a D chord, which is right across, just like G. To C, we have A to D, and then our five chord, which would be in the key of G, one, four, five, one. We have one, four, up two frets, so D up to E, five, back to A. kind of get this, I think of it as a triangle, you start here, you get this A, you move up, across, and then you're moving down the fretboard towards your right hand, two frets, so you kind of have this little triangle shape, it goes boop, 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 doot, doot, triangle. Now that sort of shape says maybe, oh, I need to play, play in B flat now. Nothing changes, you just move up one fret, B flat, cross to E flat, F, and back to B flat. One, four, five, one, sorry, one. One, four, five, one. 
So that's sort of, that's one shape, one style of triangle. But now let's say you want to play in the key of E. If you're playing in the key of E, starting with this, this first chord shape we learned, you got to be all the way up here. And that's, that's a little high, it's a little kind of ridiculous to get your hand up there, but so what we can do is we can start with an E chord in our second shape, because we have A, D, D, D sharp, E. So there's an E chord to start with, and now we need a four chord, so one, four, it's back to that A chord, E, A, and then up two frets from the A, B, back to E. So from the five, one, four, five, and then back across to one. One, down to four, up to five, back to one. And so now we have another triangle. We're starting with the diagonal. So we're kind of going down two frets and across the strings. D. A, E, up two frets, back to D, uh, E, uh, B, back to E. So we're going to start here, diagonal across, up two frets, back across. We get this little, it's hard to do in the camera, but one, diagonal to four, up two frets to five, across to one. It's another triangle shape. Diagonal, up. So now we've got one, four, five, which is sort of the basis for 95% of bluegrass songs um, and folk songs are use one, four, five chords um, in any key. So you want to play in B flat? Well, I'll start with here's a nice B flat chord. G, G sharp, A, B flat. Four is across. Five is up two frets. Diagonal back to one. You want to play an E flat. Don't go all the way up here. That's a bit, a bit high. You kind of want to stay centered low on the instrument on the number of frets. So you've got an E here, E flat rather. You also have an E flat there because you have C, C sharp, D, E flat. So E flat diagonal to four. A flat, B flat is a five chord, right across to one. One diagonal to four, up two to five, back to one. So that gives you um, pretty much every the ability to play in every key using one, four, and five chords, um, all major. Uh, so experiment, sort of give yourself a key, try to figure out where it is. Um, and I uh, just kind of get familiar with these chords. Um, so if somebody says, let's play in the key of B flat, you at least know you can play one, four, and five. And these shapes, the more you play them, the more familiar they will become. Um, so just do it a lot, play along with records this way. Um, there are other shapes that work for these major chords, like you might see the, the big G chop shape. Um, I'll Probably, I already have another lesson. I'm starting to lose, uh, lose sense of what exactly. Yes, I do have a, there is a lesson on chop chords at mandolessons.com. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking for this kind of shape, look for that other chop chord. So, um, now you got all the major chords, now you need to make them minor. Let's go back to this A chord, 2-2, two, 4-5. Two, now all you need to do is take your middle finger, if you're using this shape, and bring it down one fret. That's an A minor chord now. A major, A minor. If you're using your ring and pinky, you're going to switch from your ring and pinky 
to middle and pinky. Major, minor. And now that holds true for the chord across the way as well. D major, D minor. D major, down one fret, D minor. Again, don't play the E string. If you're using ring and pinky, D major, middle and pinky, D minor. That works all over the fretboard. Now you've got the same sort of shapes. Um, one in minor, four in minor, five in minor, five in major, one. So um, just with that little shift from major to minor, you've doubled the number of chords you know. Um, and again, experiment, uh, play along with uh, recorded music or go to a bluegrass jam or a folk jam or something um, and just get comfortable playing with these chords. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Again, there's more lessons over at mandolessons.com. Um, hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.